The subject of this seminar is the veil of thoughts. Thought is a means of concealing truth. But in quite recent weeks, we've had an astounding example of the way mankind can be bamboozled by thoughts. Uh, there was a crisis about gold. And uh, the confusion of money in any form whatsoever with wealth is one of the major problems from which civilization is suffering. Central banks around the world are losing confidence in America. Foreign nations are looking for an alternative reserve currency to the US dollar. Many nations are hoarding gold. This year, central banks are expected to purchase a net estimated 550 tons of gold, up from 85 tons in 2010. The real reason why in our world today where uh, there is no technical reason whatsoever why there should be any poverty at all, the reason it still exists is people keep asking the question, where's the money going to come from? Not realizing that money doesn't come from anywhere and never did, except if you thought it was gold. But our culture, our civilization, is entirely hung up on the notion that money has an independent reality of its own. And it is to be noted that as time goes on, the matters about which we fight with each other are increasingly abstract. And the, the wars fought about abstract problems get worse and worse. U.S. President Barack Obama, meanwhile, has admitted for the first time that drones are regularly striking Taliban and Al-Qaeda targets in Pakistan's tribal areas. The unmanned aircraft have been blamed for killing civilians as well as Taliban fighters. But in an interview on the Internet, Obama defended their use. This is a targeted, uh, focused effort at people who are on a list of active terrorists who are trying to go in and uh, harm Americans, uh, hit American facilities, American bases, uh, and so on. So there's the two men in the guest house were the mm -hmm. first people killed. You saw the U.S. forces take the bullets out of the body. On your face! Algeria, Indonesia, Thailand, Jordan. What we have essentially done is created one hell of a hammer. And for the rest of our generation, this force will be continually searching for an end. Despite whatever conspiratorial theories, there's nothing to it. We are uh, thinking about vast abstractions, ideologies called communism, capitalism, uh, all these systems, and paying less and less attention to the world of physical reality, to the world of earth and trees and waters, people, and so are, in the name of all sorts of abstractions, busy destroying our natural environment. Wildlife, for example, is having a terrible problem continuing to exist alongside human beings. And uh, the increasing power of the bulldozer to bring about a ghastly fulfillment of the biblical prophecy that every valley shall be exalted, every mountain laid low, and the rough places plain. It is you, in other words, who evoke the world and you evoke the world in accordance with what kind of a you you are, what kind of an organism. One organism evokes one world, another organism evokes another world. 
and each stem produces maybe, you know, 30 seeds. So you can imagine, we're talking maybe 500 seeds coming back up to 1,000 seeds from one seed. That's nuts. So when we talk about money in terms of payback, this is the direction we need to go in. This money thing is done. You know, mark my word. What you do is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. You are something the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is something that the whole ocean is doing. The real you is not a puppet which life pushes around. The real deep down you is the whole universe. Do you know what it is to dig the sound of anything? You, uh, I can only call it, you go down into sound and you listen to that vibration and you go into it and into it and into it and you suddenly realize that that vibration that you're listening to or singing is what there is. That's the, that's the energy of the cosmos. That's what's going on. And everything that's going on is a kind of a, of a um, pulsation of energy, which in Buddhism is called suchness. In many cultures, this tone is used in connection with sacred rituals. In India, this tone is called Saja, father of others, and the sitar and tambora are tuned accordingly. In Sufism, it is said the one who knows the secret of this tone knows the mystery of the universe. The shamanic festival use of a specific series of drums, trumpets, and harps in ancient Sumeria had them all tuned to 432 hertz. The original Stradivarius violin was designed to be tuned to 432 hertz as well. The archaic Egyptian instruments that have been unearthed so far are largely tuned to 432 hertz. 432 hertz touches the full 12 scale octave overtones of all music in creation, whereas 440 hertz only touches 8 octave overtones, leaving out an entire section of the complete musical resonance of the universe. The diameter of the moon is 2,160 miles, which is 432 times 5. The diameter of the sun is 864,000 miles, which is 432,000 times 2. The precession of the zodiac equinoxes takes 25,920 years, or simply 432 times 60. What Confucius meant about the quality of music when he says, it's based upon the quality of its music, he wasn't talking about what kind of genre the music was in. He wasn't talking about whether it was rap or country, rock and roll, gospel or jazz. What he was referring to when he met the, the uh, the quality of its music was what frequency was that music being played in and what mathematical intervals.